Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of PHT TV. We have unboxed the Heresies, we've unboxed the Fortes, the Cornwalls, the Lascalas, the K-Horns. The next logical step in the line would be to unbox these Jubilees. The main purpose of this unboxing video is to show you that while they are taller and they are somewhat intimidating in person, they are super easy, they are super easy to unbox. They're actually I think they're actually even easier to unbox than the K-horns are. So we are going to not only unbox these today, we're actually gonna take them into the other room with another one and we are gonna set these up and show you how to hook up the DSP and everything. So let's go ahead and get these unboxed. We're gonna set this high frequency cabinet off to the side. We're gonna start with the low frequency cabinet just so we actually have somewhere to set the high frequency once it is unboxed. So the low frequency cabinet is somewhat heavy. You always wanna make sure you have a unboxing friend to assist you. Now, as with almost every other video we've done, when we showed like the Cornwalls, the La Scala's, the bottom of the cabinet is on top. So once you remove the foam, you can just flip it backwards and the bottom will be in place and you'll be good to set the high frequency cabinet on there. So. Off into the back. <laughs> that box is slip slippery. And the unveiling. And there we have it. This is the low frequency cabinet of your Jubilee. So the screws for the high frequency horn do come pre-installed. So essentially what you have to do is just take a screwdriver. So we're gonna take these, set them off to the side. Set them up in my pocket. Put them in Trey's pocket. And here is the high frequency. And essentially what we're gonna do here is just lift it up and pop it right on top. You wanna lean it forward so they can see an idea of what it looks like while it's in the box. So this is what they look like. Upside you... down. <laughs> <laughs> just grab her out of there and set it on top. Now let's stop on the way out here, Jason, and turn it because there's something I wanna point out here, something that we is worth talking about these uh these screws that actually hold this this bracket to the wooden board when they put these screws through and hit them with the with the screw gun they get tight so they don't come off but they pop through just a little bit on the back side and this little as they call it in the in the factory the puppy foot uh, is very thin and it's very close to the same height as that screw so it's worthwhile taking a minute and looking to see if these are protruding past the puppy feet or past the foot that's added on here, in lieu of scratching the top of the cabinet, of the LF cabinet. If it's sticking out a little too far, then you could actually pull the screw, put another washer under it so it doesn't stick out so far, or you could even change the feet on the bottom. That's a lot of little pieces of feet though. Let's turn this thing around and stick it on top. <laughs> it doesn't weigh anything. No, <laughs> super it's just, light. It's just big and we're doing it so that we don't scratch up the cabinet. So like we were talking about before, super intimidating. It, it might be super intimidating to begin with, but assembly was super easy. I mean, essentially you just take it out of the box and it's two screws. What's this guy weigh, 20 pounds, maybe? Maybe 20 pounds with all the metal. So super easy to install. So like you can have these delivered and you can have these up and running in no time. And, and one person can do it. It's just nicer to have two to keep from messing or taking a chance of scratching something. Exactly. I'm gonna get this box out of the way real quick. I guess the next thing to do is to put the screws in that hold the HF to the LF. Uh, you wanna spin this thing 90 degrees so we can see that? All right, so I've got the screwdriver tray, you've got the screws. I do, don't I? Probably. And here, have a washer. Thank you. For reference, you're about a quarter inch off the back of this cabinet with the top, LF, top board to the LF cabinet. You have two screws. Uh, the first one is a single hole. The second one you put in and it allows you to adjust the horn in either direction to get it perfectly centered. So before you tighten down all the way, you kind of want to make your fine tuning adjustments. Um, so we're going to go ahead and screw these back down now. And, and for reference, that is there so that the LF cabinet can stay stationary and the HF section can turn a little bit. That gives you towing without actually towing the entire cabinet. If you're in a position you want to get that cabinet tight in the corner and want to get the extra low end off of the corner be off of the corner loading, you can still get some tow off of the HF. Alright, let's turn this back around so they can kind of see the front end view here. Yeah, as this is a cinema speaker to start with, yeah. uh, typically you'd have a HF up here as a three-way, but as this is being used as a two-way and independent, it does not have a passive crossover. So your amplifier will connect directly to the HF driver and the LF amp channel directly to the LF. The Zilliqa 4080 is the crossover for this unit. 
you do the crossover before you send it to the amplification and then straight to the speaker. It's good in some ways and questionable in others. When you send signal to the HF driver, uh, it, is, it is whatever the amp is being sent. So if you make a mistake and send full bandwidth to the HF driver, you have the opportunity to blow in that driver. Even though it's a three inch compression driver and takes 50 watts, you know. <laughs> it takes a beating. It, but uh, it, you, you have the capability of damaging this if you don't pay attention to what you're doing. Yeah, we'll actually take you in to do the setup here in just a moment to show you exactly how to set everything up. And what's really nice about when you order this from Patuka Home Theater, they actually include the Zilliqa 4080 and they have the Klipsch approved settings installed, pre-installed in this unit so you don't have to risk any, uh, any damage to the product itself. That's a very important piece to, to a system like this is that crossover limiter, uh, all the time delay, all the things that that piece is capable of doing. Uh, I, I think a good portion of what it's capable of doing is actually used in setting up for these speakers. We actually have the, the Zilliqa 4080 over here. So we've actually got the Zilliqa 4080 and uh, we're gonna actually take this into the other room and we're gonna show you how to set these guys up as well. So let's go. Alright, so we've got Corey over here setting up the DSP and Trey is going to show you guys how easy it is to hook up these Jubilees to wire up these Jubilees to the amp. Well, Corey chose uh, some wire that I like a lot. He's using 14.4. I think you probably all that have ever seen me on Facebook or talked to me on Facebook know that uh, wire is wire. Continuity is continuity, <laughs> as Bonehead says. Um, so what we're gonna do is connect this, this basic speaker wire to these units. This unit, since there is no crossover involved in this, passive, excuse me, there is no passive crossover here. It is directly from the amp to the speaker. Uh, we're gonna use black and red for the LF. And uh, this unit has dual binding post because uh, even though there's only one woofer in there because it is a common binding post on our cinema products. And as this is originally a cinema speaker, uh, they use the standard binding post there, or connection post. Now, something that I do and I tell everybody to do, when they're hooking up a speaker that has multiple connections for each unit, like a high and a low, or multiple jumpers, I always use the other side jumper uh, of the jumper on the two different size legs or two different legs. The reason for that is, is if, it, if my screw happens to come loose and a jumper comes off, the entire speaker stops in a standard speaker. Now that isn't the case with this Jubilee, but somebody's gonna ask why I use those particular screws. Force a habit. So we're gonna take these and run it up and come over the top of this. So I've got a little strain relief here. Now we're using green for ground and white for hot. And this is a spring terminal. We just push that spring terminal in and stick the wire under it. You notice I'm also using bare wire connectors. Uh, these will be put on and left on. So there's no reason to put a, binding, uh, a, a, a terminal underneath that. The bare wire is actually what that spring terminal is designed to work with. And typically, I would have some uh, cable ties or something to tie this down. Uh, but right now, because I didn't bring cable ties, all I have is gaffer's tape. So I would typically take a little piece of gaffer's tape and stick it on here. My handy assistant's gonna do that for me. Ah, 
<laughs> See, if I had to my mouth shut, he'd have handed me a piece of tape instead of the whole roll. <laughs> Yeah, see how you do? By this time, usually I've used my teeth. That's way more than I needed. You can have it back. Stay. This is a lot easier with the Velcro ties. All right, so now we got a little strain relief on there. Wires tied down, we should be ready to go. All right, Trey's finally done wiring these up, so let's go ahead and get them back into place. I come from the speaker to the amp first, just because that's the way I like to do it. You get everything connected before I hook the preamps up. Um, so I'm coming, this is the LF section of the left Jubilee. I'm gonna go to the left side of this amp, and we're gonna put the right Jubilee LF on the right side of this amp. There is a hole through this binding post, like most binding posts so that we can actually push the wire through the binding post and tighten the post down on top of the wire like a guillotine. Makes a very solid connection. Super easy, super secure. And the hardest part about it is seeing the green wire and the red wire if you're colorblind or seeing the little hole if you're old like me and can't see through it. So you have to wait till you can get light shine to it so you can go through there. All right, so there's that side. Uh, Move. Okay, so the LF amp is connected to the speaker wire. I still have the preamp cables coming out of that one. And let's move to the HF amp. Now again, this isn't gonna be extremely pretty because it's not a permanent install. It's temporary. So, there's half of the HF amp. Let's put the other wires on. All right, so we have our HF speaker wires connected and our LF speaker wires connected. We're gonna lay our amp back down here and plug it into our power conditioner. We're currently using the Surgex XR315 power conditioner in order to keep all of our items clean, all of our power coming into the amps clean as can possibly be. Next step is to hook up the DSP and we've actually, Corey has provided a cheat sheet for it that we wanna actually put on top of it and show you guys. The cheat sheet data comes with the system so that it makes it a little easier for the somewhat novice user to connect it. So these are our preamp cables going into our amps, to feeder amps, right and left, high and low. We have our speaker wires connected to our amps, right and left, high and low. And our preamp cables going from our actual preamp into the, the brains of the operation. So we're gonna stick this little jewel in here. And I'm gonna start with the LF amplifier. I'm just gonna lay it on top for the time being. Not necessarily in its place, so we can have a good shot of what we're doing. So, left side. And we do have this cheat sheet that Corey provided in order to set here on top so you guys can actually see everything that we're doing there. You wanna set that on there? It'll do. He's actually got it spaced out so that it actually lines up with the connectors on the back of the unit. Now this unit, uh, uses XLR uh, balanced connectors inside input and output. The amplifiers chosen here also use balanced connectors as do the preamp. Uh, some of you out in the world may use an amplifier with a single-ended or a RCA connection uh, or a preamp with an RCA connection. If you do, you will have to adapt to the crossover unit because it is strictly balanced connections. If you do the adaption, uh, so you go from RCA to XLR, make sure you use the same cable uh, in all locations because there are cases that some of those cables are wired different than others and it can cause you problems. So mismatching cables could be a problem. Um, there are some other d concerns about that conversion from RCA to XLR, but I think we're gonna try to do a a short video about that later and go into it in detail. So at, uh, at this time, I think we're just gonna move forward to connecting this with a balanced, since we kind of talked about this being a quasi plug and play system, we'll keep everything 
uh, unbalanced so that it makes it easy. So I'm gonna start on my LF uh, output. I've got my left connection here. Uh, low output, we'll start right there. And then number two, right low output, we'll go in right here. Now the HF preamp cable will come over here and connect her up to the HF. And the last preamp cable on the, going to the amps is to the HF on the right side. All right, so that gives us four outputs to their amplifiers. We're going to use our input connectors to feed this. All right, so I've got my left balance connector coming from my preamp going into the left input of the crossover right into right. If you notice the inputs are male and the outputs use female connectors. All right so now we have all our inputs and outputs connected and our power cord. We're going to kind of tuck that stuff back here in an ugly manner behind everything. Yeah, plop this on top of the Furman piece. Yeah. And our amps over here. So everything is now electrically connected. Uh, we have power and it looks like our unit has pulled up the Jubilee preset. Actually it even says Jubilee on it. The definition of the Jubilee is, is it's trademark, you know, how, uh, how defining it is to to the music that it plays. Extremely revealing. And the low frequencies are they just blow you away. It's now there there's no there's no substitute for the low frequency haptic sensation that comes from a folded horn. There is just no no substitute for that. You can have all the subs you want, you can have uh, any other bass reflex speaker you want, but as a single speaker, the, the horn-loaded LF is, in my opinion, unbeatable. You guys have seen us unbox the K-horns. We've talked a little bit of history about the K-horns. You've seen us unbox the Jubilees. We placed the Jubilees so that they are ready for our side-by-side -side comparison. I think we're ready too. What do you think? Uh, we like a little bit more electronics to hook the, <laughs> the K-horns up to the, to the switcher, but past that, we're, we're good to go. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, it has been a fun ride, kind of going all the way from the Heresies all the way up to the Jubilees, and I can't wait to test these guys side by side. So. Subscribe to the channel and like the things we do. Let us know if there's something you want us to do particularly. Um, and if you have any questions, reach out. I'm Go Trey. Ahead. I'm Jason. We're gone. Where the hell is the hole? Shut up, Trey. <laughs> well, the only thing we need now is a source. <laughs> and I'm not going to sing because it won't work. You wouldn't okay, want to hear We'll it get either. a mic. We can get a mic hooked up and you, Trey can you, sing. You do not want that to happen. All right, give me some levels, Trey. Hello, hip hop, the hippie doo the hippie the hip hip hop. You don't stop it. Rock it to the bang bang booty, subject the boogies to the bang bang booty bee.